In this Luminar Neo photo editing tutorial, we're going to take this photo, which was actually shot in a mall in Dubai, and turn it into this. Along the way, we'll learn about layers and blending modes, and how we can add elements to our photos to create realistic composites. Let's do it. So the first thing we need to do is tell Luminar Neo where our photos are. So I'm going to come to Add Photos and choose the Add Folder option right here. I've navigated to my Compositing Basics in Luminar Neo folder that I've set up. And here in the source files, you can see this is the photo that we're going to be working with. And here you can see what it looked like in real life, which was a staged Star Wars set up in a mall in Dubai. But while I was there, I thought I certainly need to capture a shot of this. Then we're going to see what we can do with this in post-production. So the first thing we want to do is to come up into the edit section. That's going to give us access to all of our editing tools, which is going to allow us to get the base photo looking pretty good. And then we're going to use the layers, which we find over on the left hand side here to start introducing new elements in to this photo. So my goal with this shot is to take it from reality, which is a setup inside a mall, and turn it into what would look like a screenshot straight from a Star Wars movie. And so to help us achieve that, the first thing I think we should do is actually crop this, rather than being in the traditional photographic format, a three by two, we need something more cinematic, which is more like a 2.1 to one ratio. So I'm gonna to come to the crop section here, I'm gonna come down into the ratio box, and I'm just gonna enter a custom crop, 21 to 10, which is 2.1 times wider than it is high. I just click OK and you can see that effect there. And straight away we have a much more cinematic crop. And by applying this crop, it's helped us in a few ways. Straight away we think movie when we look at this kind of aspect ratio, but it's also cropped away a lot of the little platforms that the stormtroopers were standing on. So that's beneficial. And we've also lost a lot of the negative space that was in the original. So if I jump back into this crop tool here, I'm going to bring the crop in slightly from the left so that we lose this pillar here that says Star Wars. I'm not going to come in any further because I still want to leave a little bit of this stormtrooper here, just hinting at the fact that it's a huge army of stormtroopers that are with Vader here. And I'm going to do the same on the right hand side, maybe just bring this in ever so slightly. If we look at the sides of the frames, you can see that the lines that are there start to converge towards the top of the frame, i.e. we are tilting the camera up. And oftentimes I'll correct for that, but in this instance, I'm happy with that because by looking up at Vader we're giving him more of that kind of heroic presence. Let's just close the crop tool down and that will apply what we've done there. As with any photo edit that you undertake, I think it's a good idea to assess your photo to start with to pinpoint areas that need to be corrected. So let's just cast our eyes over the frame. One thing that stands out to me is the yellowy orange color cast that we have going on here on the pillars and particularly through this window here, I need to neutralize that. We've also got giveaway telltale signs that this is in a mall or this is a display. So the Star Wars logo in that bottom left, we need to lose that. Also the fashion poster over here, we need to remove that as well. The other things that I would like to do is bring out more attention to Vader, so perhaps with the structure tool, that might help us quite well with that. And I also noticed that this particular stormtrooper right here is brighter than all the other stormtroopers. There's obviously a light that's being cast on him, and so I don't really want him to stand out. So we wanna bring the exposure of this guy down slightly as well. So first things first, let's get to erasing those details that are distracting us. So let's start with the Star Wars logo down here, and I'm literally just gonna paint over all of those little elements that I want to get rid of come back to the tool and just click erase and anywhere I painted that red, Luminar is gonna do its best to remove those for us. And that's not too bad. Okay, let's come over here. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and I'm just gonna paint over this poster. All of the editing I'm doing today, I'm doing with a mouse just to show you guys that it is possible even if you don't have a graphics tablet that you can do this. And here you can see our first issue with the Erase tool. Luminar's AI has tried to intelligently look at what else is going on in the scene and replace what we're erasing with something that should be there. But I don't want another random stormtrooper head which doesn't keep to the perspective of everything else. I was just hoping for more of the pillar. So I'm just gonna come in and just erase elements one by one. And that little bit just seems really stubborn that it's dead intent on putting in those little side bits. It's still doing this. I'm trying to get them really precise here. And that's one of the problems with the Erase tool. You're at the mercy of Luminar's AI and hoping that it's going to do a good job. And that's why I'm very excited that the Clone and Stamp tool is making a return to Luminar Neo. And even by the time you watch this, it may already be here. 
So if you have access to the clone and stamp tool, I would certainly recommend utilizing that for something like this rather than just keep coming in and trying to smash it with the erase tool because while it is good, it's certainly not giving me the results I was hoping for. Okay, zooming back out, we can still see this little green area here and it kind of looks like leaves, which isn't what I want, so let's just keep going. Now my final composite, what I'm hoping to do is actually put some sparks, maybe an explosion behind these guys. So I'm not too worried that that's a little bit of a mess at the moment, but I would like to get rid of this little tree that's poking out around the side here. So let's just see what we can do to erase that. Any signs of flower pots or agriculture need to be gone. All right, that's okay. Right, next step, let's darken down this Stormtrooper here. So what I'm gonna do for that is open the develop section here, which allows us to grab the exposure, i.e. the brightness, and bring that down. We can also bring the highlights down slightly as well. Now, I know this is darkening the whole area, but as you guys know, this is where masking comes in. So we can set the sliders roughly where we want them and then come into the masking section and then just apply that effect only where we want it. So I'm gonna select the brush tool here, and that's gonna allow me to paint this effect over over this stormtrooper so I want to push the strength all the way to 100 just so I can get this done pretty quickly I don't need to be too precise I just can't want to see where we've got to with this little edit and then we can use the eyeball tool to toggle our before and our after before and after and he's probably getting just a little bit too dark so I can come back to the adjustments and then I can come in and just tweak how much I bring that exposure down yeah something like that's good Next, I want to bring our attention to Vader himself. So I'm going to close this develop tool down and I'm going to jump into the structure AI tool. And now I'm going to grab the amount slider and I'm going to crank that all the way up and see what that does for us. And then let's come toggle our eyeball tool so we can see our before and let it go for our after, before and after. And when I'm doing that, I'm assessing the whole scene. Yes, it is Vader that I want to actually enhance, but when I actually flick this before and after, I'm actually noticing that I quite like what it's doing for the stormtroopers as well. It's bringing out all the detail in their armory. And so I may want to paint some of that over the stormtroopers and over Vader as well. So we're going to jump into the masking section. And this time, rather than brushing it in, I'm actually going to come to the mask AI section. And although strictly speaking our characters here aren't human, I'm hoping that by clicking human in the mask AI section, I may get a good Kickstarter for my mask. Let's see what it does. And although that's not perfect, it's pretty good. It's a great starting point. So using that mask, I can now add to it. And so I've come out of the mask AI and I'm now gonna go into brush. And using the paint tool, I'm gonna to bring the strength down this time. I'm just gonna click once so I can see the mask again. Okay, I'm gonna push the strength up actually, just so I can get it done quickly. And I'm just gonna go over these stormtroopers just to add in that clarity over these guys as well. Make sure that they've got it over their faces and maybe even this guy on the side who looks like he's got a handbag. Okay, let's toggle our before and our after. So we've got the best of both worlds. We've got that lovely structure AI bringing out detail invader and the stormtroopers, but it's not dirtying up the ceiling and the architecture like it was in the original now that we've applied that mask. But one thing I am noticing is that it's brightening Vader up quite a bit. So I'm gonna come back into the develop section and see what we can do about that. One option would be to grab the exposure slider and just bring that down. But I kind of feel like that's putting us back almost where we started from. So I'm not gonna take that approach. I'm actually gonna try the smart contrast slider because that's gonna push our blacks more towards those blacks, but it should keep some of that nice detail in the highlights. Let's have a little look at our before. And our after, yep, okay. And then we could bring the highlights up just so that we're keeping that contrast by bumping up those brighter parts. And let's just grab the shadows and just see whether we want to darken him down at all. And I think we'll grab the blacks actually and pull those down. All right, let's toggle our before and after. And again, I'm only really interested in Vader. I'm gonna come into the masking section, grab my brush, maybe build it up this time. So normally if you apply your mask with 100%, you're gonna get this look at 100% exactly. Whereas if we bring our strength down, somewhere around that 50% mark, for example, we're gonna be applying half of the effect. And so I'm gonna put that over his cape. We'll just sort of build this up in, in a half pass. And then I'm gonna assess what I think, where might need a little bit more of it, have a little look at our before, and our after, and if there's anywhere that I feel needs to just be a little bit darker, I can just go over it again. And that's the beauty of building up your masking by setting the strength somewhere around 50. Sometimes I work at about a third, putting it around 30, 33%. And that just allows me to build the effect up. And then if I put it in places that I think, well, that's a little bit too much, then we can flip to the erase 
tool and take it away like his face actually looked a little bit better before we put that contrast on so let's have a look at our before and our after okay we've managed to push vader's exposure back down so now we can use the backslash key to see our original we can see our before and our after it's pretty subtle but you can see that we are making improvements to this photo the next thing I'd like to look at is the issue of color. So no better place to do that than in the color tool itself. Initially, when we open up this tool, we don't really have too much in the way of control. We can add saturation to the color. We can add vibrance to the color. But in terms of working with individual colors, we actually need to drop down this HSL section, hue, saturation, and luminance. So the place we're gonna get most bang for our buck is in the saturation section here. And unlike the slider above, which controls all the colors all at one time, by working down here in HSL, we can actually speak into individual colors. So I can grab the yellows only and actually saturate or desaturate those. So in this case, I'm gonna drop the saturation, not all the way to pure black and white, but I'm just gonna reduce that yellow from the left-hand side. We've still got a little bit of orange going on in the tonality here, so I'm just gonna reduce that as well. And if you're ever unsure where colors exist in your photo and you're like, oh, is this changing it or is it not changing it? I can't really tell. Just come up to the main saturation slider and push that all the way to 100. And then wherever there are color casts, you're gonna see them more clearly. So now we can see that yes, there's definitely orange existing in the ceiling and these pillars. And so we can now grab our slider, bring that down, double click the saturation slider here to reset that and we can see here's our before here's our after we've managed to neutralize those tones but still keep some of these blues and reds which kind of just help to add a bit of believability if you just take away all the color from your photo it's like well that's just a black and white photo so you need to be specific about which colors you're changing and removing Okay, I'm gonna close the color section down now and I just wanna add a little bit more interest and a little bit more pop into this photo. And because we're already airing towards a nice clean monochromatic look, I think by adding the dramatic filter, we're actually gonna get a nice amount of contrast. So I'm gonna push this all the way to 100. And as you can see, that really accentuates the blacks and whites in a photo. I don't need to be that aggressive, but you can see what it's doing. And like I always say, it's always good just to push the sliders all the way to 100 and just get a feel for what they're doing. You certainly don't need to apply it at that intensity, but at least you know what it's doing to your picture. And then you can always come in and mask it more strongly into areas you want to. So for example, I could paint over the stormtroopers only and just give them a real punchy look. But I think I'm just gonna apply this to the whole photo and keep it somewhere around 37. I'm happy with that. Now, one thing that's bothering me about the environment itself is I feel it's just a little bit too clean cut for the Sith Lord and the Stormtroopers. So what I'd like to do is just grab the develop tool here again. So as you know, I've already applied this tool and unlike Luminar AI where you can only apply a tool once, you can see that I've already applied develop here, I've applied develop here, and I'm gonna go for another edition of develop as well. So this is the third time I'm applying this tool and each time we're able to leverage it in different ways. So this time I'm gonna go for more of an overall darkening effect and this time as well, I'm just gonna sort of keep it confined to the background. I'll push the highlights up just so that we're protecting the lights in the ceiling. And with my masking this time, I think I'm just gonna pull a linear gradient down from the top. So let's select linear gradient, click once here, and start to pull down. And so above that line at the top, that's gonna to be 100% of that darkening that we just created. And then 50% in the center, tapering all the way off to zero here. So let's apply that just by clicking the adjustment here and we can have a little look at our before and are after, and that's what I want in the ceiling, but it is going over Darth Vader's head. So let's see what we can do about that. We're gonna come out of the linear gradient here, and we're gonna see whether we can use Mask AI in conjunction with the linear gradient to achieve what we want. So what I'm hoping to do is keep that gradient like it was, but actually use Mask AI to cut out Darth Vader from the linear gradient. Let's see if we can do that. So Luminar's already run those Mask AI calculations before, so they should still be accessible to us. If we click the human, it's gonna add that human mask or what it thought was the human mask. If we click it again, it should remove it. So here we go, let's click that. Ah, brilliant. Now we have our linear gradient, but with the removal of Darth Vader, so it won't be going over the top of his head. And if you want to clean the mask up, we can do that with a brush as well. So I can just scroll in using my scroll wheel, hold the spacebar key and just drag and come back to the brush in the erase mode, push the strength all the way to 100, click and paint just to remove that effect from Darth Vader's helmet here. 
Now in this video, I'm not gonna be worrying about being super precise with my mask. I want this to be more about delivering the concept to you guys rather than getting hung up on little perfections and imperfections, such as the fact that I went over the edge of Darth Vader's helmet just there. I'm not gonna worry about that, okay? I don't know whether you guys have noticed this, but there's a lack of symmetry in the fact that the light on the left-hand side is off here, whereas it's on here. So I'm going to see whether we can actually steal from this side and put it over this side of the photo, just so we have that sense of symmetry. Now, I'd love to know in the comments whether you think this is getting into the weeds a little bit too much, but for me, it's paying attention to these little details which elevates the quality of your work. So what are we going to do to do that? Well. I'm going to export the photo as it is so it looks exactly identical to this and I'm going to bring it in as a new layer over the top so we won't see any difference other than there are actually two identical images stacked one on top of the other. I'm then going to create a mirror image of it so that it will be like this but flipped and then I can just paint back in the light which is basically stealing from this side, it'll appear over there. So let's do that. So I'm gonna export the image. So one way to do that would be to right click and come to export in the context menu. However, it's not available to us here, it's grayed out. So what we would need to do if that happens is just jump back into the catalog, now come to the image, right click, and for some reason it is now available to export. Don't ask me why. I'm gonna select the format to be TIFF because that's gonna enable us to have a higher quality image, a bit depth, whereas in JPEG we can only use an eight bit we can push that up to 16 bit which is great we're also going to use adobe rgb as our color space rather than srgb just gives us a little bit more information in terms of the colors so tiff adobe rgb 16 bit color depth i've previously set up a folder called exports from neo so i'm just going to select that as our output folder so i click export and now if i jump into exports from neo we should see we have that photo so if we come back into the edit section of this photo we can now come over to the plus icon in the layer section here. And this is gonna allow us to add another layer over the top of this photo. And this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna click the plus icon in my images. And we're already in the folder where we just exported that photo. So we double click it. It loads up as a little thumbnail here, which gives us the option just to click it. And here we go, everything looks exactly the same, except now we have one layer on top of the other. And so using this layer, I'm gonna come over to the flip horizontal option here. So let's click that. And this pretty spooky image is made up of a 50-50 blend of the two layers. And so you can see if I bring the opacity down of this top layer, and you can tell that that's the layer that's active because it has a blue border around it. We've got the blue border around here, denoting that we're working with the layer properties. So we can bring the opacity of this layer up. So if I push that all the way to 100, now we just see the layer that sits on top, which has been flipped in a mirror and so we're going to try and steal just this little bit here so how do we do that well our trusty masks and in the layer properties we have masking as our option just here and so i just need to come to the brush and i'm going to paint in just this little strip of light just here and so i just click and drag with my mouse and because I've got my softness set to 100, which is a good idea when you are actually trying to bring things in just gently, um, unfortunately, we've also brought in a little bit of ghosting of some lights from the other side. So if that happens, if things appear that you don't want, just switch to the Erase tool and we can just remove those. I may also just get rid of that little bit of light bleed that we have there as well. And then I'll just correct this little line here just so that it stays nice and true. Okay, this next technique I'm gonna show you is all about keeping your system optimized and keeping Luminar running nice and quickly. So if I jump into the edit section here, you're not gonna see anything because I'm on this top layer. So any edits are reflective of the layer that you're actually on. But if I come to the one underneath, you're gonna see all these original edits are still there and accessible, and now we have two layers as well. So the more tools that we add into Luminar, the more we're taxing our computer because we're asking our system to remember all of these changes in RAM. And the same goes for the layers. The more layers we add, we're asking it to save not just the photo underneath, but it's like a whole new photo on top of that as a brand new layer. And so when you're compositing, things can get complex pretty quickly. And a good workaround for that is to come to the export option. Again, keep it nice and high as a TIFF, same sort of settings as we had before. And now I can come into my exports from Neo folder. You can see the original version that we exported. And now on the right hand side, we have this new version that has that light mirrored across to the other side. And if I double click this and come to the edit section, you can see that we currently have no edits. And that's a good and a bad thing. Bad thing is if we wanted to change something, 
we don't have access to it anymore. But the really good thing is that if we were happy with the changes that we've made, which I am, we now have a brand new file. And in terms of your computer's memory usage, everything's fresh. And so things are gonna move so much quicker again. So if you're finding that your computer's getting bogged down, if you're working on an edit and you've applied a lot of tools, this is a technique you can use just to free up a little bit of system resources, just so you can keep going and work a little bit smoother. Right, let's start building our composite. I'm gonna come over to the layers section here and click the add new layer icon, and I'm gonna click the plus icon again, which is gonna allow me to come in and choose a new source image, just like we did before. But this time I've got some images in this textures folder. I have some fire, I have some lasers, and I have some smoke. And we're gonna try and combine some of these elements into our existing photo, just to give it a sense that some action is going on. So I think what I'd like to do to start with is actually add some flames in the foreground. And so you can see in this photo here, this is actually a shot of just a normal gas fire. And hopefully I can demonstrate with a bit of creative thinking, you can introduce unexpected elements in a believable way into your photos. So I'm just clicking on this once and that's gonna load this photo up. And it's the same as last time when we did the mirroring. You can see that it's introduced with a 50% opacity. So that means that we're seeing half of this layer's intensity. And so if we wanna see all of it, we push it all the way to 100. If we wanna see less of it, we bring it down towards zero. We can click and drag this layer around and position it where we want. We can also grab these handles and either change the scale of it so we can shrink it down. We can also come outside of these little dots and that way we can actually rotate it as well. So what I'd like to do is actually utilize these flames in our photo and combine them. So you might think, how are you actually gonna do that? It doesn't look very believable because you've got all this black in the background. It's never gonna come across as authentic. Well, that's where our blend modes come in. Currently, we are in the normal blend mode and you can see that we have a multitude of different options available to us. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of them. So if we're dealing with a dark background and we just wanna keep the brighter elements, what we need to do is to either choose lighten or what I prefer for this kind of image would be screen. And what that does is turn all of the black pixels invisible. And now we can come down and we can actually put our flames into our photo. And just like with any tool or layer, we have options to mask that in. So just over Vader's cape here, I just wanna remove that. So I'm gonna to come to the brush option. I'm gonna to come to arrays and I'm just gonna click and paint that away just from that area around there. As I said before to you in the video, I'm not gonna to be too precise with my masking. It's more about delivering to you the concepts involved. Let's say we wanna do something similar with flames, but over on this left-hand side here, well, we can come over to the layer itself, right click, and this gives us the option to duplicate the layer. As you can see, we can hide it, we can remove it, which I don't want to do, or we can duplicate it. So I'll show that layer again, and here we come to duplicate layer. And now I can drag that over to the other side, we can use that mirroring tool again, just to flip it over, position it where we want it, and then again, use the masking tools. I'm gonna to use the brush in the erase mode, and we can just erase that from Vader's cape. There's some other odd elements going on over here, which are just adding a little bit of uh, anomalies to his cape, so I'll just remove those as well. Okay, so now we have some flames, but to help with a believable composite, one thing you always want to do is ask yourself, how would the element that I'm introducing into my photo interact with the other things in the scene? So for example, if we had some orange flames going on down around the stormtroopers here, maybe to the side of Vader, you would actually expect a little bit of light reflection to be going on. So the orangey flames, maybe they're actually lighting up the stormtroopers legs with a little bit of orange, maybe even like the underside of the helmets here. So how would we do that? How would we introduce some orange to the side of Vader's cape here? Well, surprise, surprise, it involves adding another layer. So we're gonna come over to the left-hand side, click the plus icon, add a new layer, click that again. And this time I'm gonna open a solid color. These panels, just like the photos in the rest of the video, are shared with my members who opted for membership plus downloads. Um, but it's easy enough just to either create one of these or to download just a solid color from the internet. It really doesn't matter what the color is and I'll show you why. We just need to load it up and currently it's set at 50%. So you can see if I push it all the way to 100, that's a really good indication of this is our layer sat over the top of Vader and also sat over the top of the flames as well at the moment. But we're gonna use this to actually colorize the areas around the flames. So 
to do that we need to change the blend mode and there's various blend modes that operate in a different way to add this color but one of my favorites would be either overlay or soft light hard light is also pretty good as well um, but it's a little more intense so I prefer overlay it's kind of halfway in between so we'll go for that but as you can see the color isn't quite right if I go back to normal you can see this is the color that we're introducing it's pretty easy to change this so all you need to do is come down to the color tool itself and now we're not going to be changing the color and now we need to understand we're not changing the color in the whole of the image we are only talking to the layer that is currently selected and if you remember that is the layer that has the blue outline on it so if I was to start changing the color here we're going to change the color of this so I can make it more intense by increasing the saturation I can make it less intense by bringing the saturation down but in our instance we want to actually introduce more of a vibrant kind of orange currently we're introducing red that's no good so let's jump into the HSL section we could grab the hue slider for the red itself and start changing that that is one option for us or what I normally prefer to do is to actually just grab the hue shift down here and that allows us to move that color into any hue we want so I'm just going to find a kind of orange that represents this kind of fiery look here go with that and now I'm just going to change that blend mode again in the layer properties from normal to overlay I can now come and move this down but rather than positioning this where I want it and then masking it in what I like to do is actually fill the entire frame or we can stretch it doesn't really matter stretch is more precise because it covers the frame exactly and then we can come in and use our masking again so we can just come in and select the brush drop the strength right down and we can use our bracket keys the right hand bracket key is going to make our brush larger we can click and we can start painting we could actually even introduce this color all the way over the bottom of Vader's cape here and currently as I'm painting it it's a little confusing because it looks bright red but that is just as you know the mask showing up so I can either introduce that in layers by building it up at, with the strength of 21 each time or we can just get it done just a little bit quicker and like I say I'm not too worried about super precision in this video it's more about just showing you the concepts and so whenever I'm doing things like this I'm trying to think how is this flame or whatever I'm introducing interacting with my scene so I'm thinking perhaps on Vader's cape here he may just be getting a little bit of an orange fringe down the side you know over this side as well that was really imprecise and if you've made a mistake like I did here it's super easy to fix we just switched the erase tool if I make the brush nice and big it's going to give us a really nice soft edge so that we can feather this in much more believably and I had to pause the recording I closed Neo down I've reopened it and for some reason it's lost that mask that I created over the flame here that I've just noticed so easy enough to fix I just reselect that layer I'm going to come into the masking properties my brush and that's where I want to erase the flames from Vader. So I'll push the strength all the way to 100. And we actually want to take it away all the way from his cape there. And you want to be careful of getting a soft edge on things like flames because obviously as we get a kind of halfway transition between the two, it doesn't look that believable. So we just want to be as precise as we can be. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to flip to this other one as well because that was two was introducing just a couple of anomalies over Vader's cape. So I'm just going to come to the erase tool here and just make sure that we're not bleeding any of that fireplace image over his cape so that's a really nice way to add colorization to areas of your image and so why don't we just push that a little bit further and see what else we can do these lights up here that are currently white we could introduce some color into those or we could just add a color right through the top of the scene here as if there's some kind of like blue light going on so let's do that we can just right click on our panel we can duplicate it because of the mode that it's currently in it's intensifying that color down here and maybe we might want to do that in fact I'm going to I'm not going to have it quite as strong as that but I am preferring just a little bit more intensity so I'm going to actually use that bit of serendipity and just introduce 50% more of that layer just so we get more kind of heat from those flames there okay now let's duplicate the layer again as you can see we can just keep going with this right I'm going to push that to 100% go to normal mode and currently we still have the mask active from what we did below it when we duplicated the layer it also duplicated that mask 
So what we want to do is kill that mask. So we're going to come masking, we're going to come to mask actions, and those actions are going to allow us some other options for the mask. And the easiest one we want to do here is just to click clear and that's gone, or we can just fill the whole mask. So currently we have 100% of this layer showing. And as you will recall, we changed the color. So this time we want to change the color to something else, right? So we come back into the edits section here, we're in the color tool that we've already applied. And if I show the before and the after, you can see how we introduced that orangey tonality. Well, let's grab that hue shift again and just see if we can't change the color to something else. What about like a kind of blue, rich blue like this? And how do we get that to show up on our layer? Well, we come back to the tool section and in the layers property, we need to change our blend mode from normal, which is showing it in its full 100% normal mode. We need to come down, change that to overlay. And there you go. We've got blue introduced over the whole photo, but I think I just want to put it up through the ceiling perhaps. Currently the effect is over the whole photo. So I just want to revisit the masking options and I'm just going to invert the mask. That's going to flip it around so we could see 100% of everything before we're going to flip the mask around now we see none of it because we inverted it that's going to allow us to actually reintroduce that effect only where we want it so i'm going to choose the linear gradient and in the same way we darkened the ceiling down before this time i'm going to introduce that color by dragging from the top and dragging down don't worry it's not red that is just showing us our mask and as soon as we come out of the tool there you go, we've colorized that ceiling, but it's also going over Vader's face. Now, unfortunately, we can't use Mask AI to do what we did before where we subtracted him, and that is because Mask AI only works on the layer that you currently have active. I would love it if the developers at Lumina would allow you to borrow a mask from one layer to another, but it's not there at the moment. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to come in and just erase that from Vader's face probably didn't want to do that with 100%. So let's just paint some of that back in with a moderate intensity of 33%. And when you're working with masks, you can just sort of flip flop between uh, adding to your mask and taking it away just until you get the look you want. And I'm going to leave a little bit of that blue on Vader's shoulders. Just again, it's adding to that believability of a blue light being above and it hitting his shoulders and bouncing up. If we wanted to, we could also come in and paint a little bit of the reflection of this blue onto the stormtroopers. Um, <laughs> if I start on one, I've got to do all of them. Uh, but I'll just give you a little bit of a demonstration just by adding just a tiny amount to this guy. That is super subtle. I'm not going to push it any further, otherwise you'll really see it. But trust me, we're adding a little bit of blue there and we could go a little bit further with that. Let's do our hide and show of that layer to see what we've done. If you feel like it's a little bit too strong, which I do, we can just reduce the opacity. Okay, let's press on with a bit more compositing. I said before, I wasn't too worried about this little area here because I was gonna add an explosion. So let's see if we can do that. Add some flames in the background, something going on. So I'm gonna to come to the plus icon again, jump into my fire section. And this time I think we're gonna add this here, which is actually a firework. And this is part of what I was alluding to earlier about thinking creatively about the elements you're introducing. We can use it, we can repurpose the firework as an explosion, a Star Wars explosion. So I'm gonna click that, it's gonna load it into my layers palette. It's not loaded over the photo yet. I need to actually click on it to load that in. And now we can move that over to where we want. And so I'm thinking we're gonna put that behind these guys over here and just sort of introduce that behind these stormtroopers. If I push the opacity all the way to 100, you can see that again, it's gonna be very difficult to actually try and mask this in and paint it in without introducing some of these black fringing. And that's really not what you want. Let me show you that as an example. I'm just gonna get my brush. We're gonna paint this in. I'm gonna push the strength to about 50%. So we're gonna be adding half of this layer as I go. So I don't know, I'll just do a little bit of masking there just so that we can kickstart what's going on. And let's go over this bit again. And to bring this in in normal mode without getting any sort of fringing around this explosion and smoke is going to be nigh on impossible. And so again, that's where our blending options come in. We can change the blend mode from normal into something more appropriate. So I'm going to come out of the masking options and go back to properties. And that's going to allow me to switch out to, oh, I don't know, let's try overlay. Okay, in the very brightest areas, it looks okay, but unfortunately with overlay, it also darkens areas that are already dark. So a more appropriate option would be to use the screen mode and we need to paint this in so that we're getting the full effect of this. So I'm just gonna push that strength a little higher and now I can be a little less precise with the mask 
because I know that it's only going to introduce these brighter elements. And now comes the most painstaking part where you need to remove that mask from the areas we don't want it. So I'm gonna come in and just start painting away again with my mouse. So it's not gonna be very easy. And if you guys are interested in doing more sort of work like this or any photo editing in general, if you don't have one, I would strongly recommend getting yourself a graphics tablet. I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description below. I've had several and the Wacom one that I use, I find is the best balance between size, pressure, sensitivity, price, all of that stuff. I'm actually going to paint a little bit over that stormtrooper's head because these little speckles on his helmet here actually looks like reflections. If we want to make the flame more intense, what we could do is actually duplicate this layer again, and this time move out of screen mode. We're gonna go for overlay, but we're just gonna tidy our mask up so that all of the dark areas, we remove those and just leave that greater intensity in these areas around the center of the explosion. So again, brush mode, arrays, make the brush size pretty big. Maybe drop this strength a little bit as we come in a little bit tighter towards the flame. And let's come over and hide that layer just so that we can see what we've actually done by combining a screen layer, which brought in the explosion without any of the black behind it, just the brighter pixels. So we got the effect of that explosion and then we've intensified it by changing the additional layer to overlay. So it's intensifying those colors in the overlay mode. And then because it was just making black around those edges and darkening those bits, we've just brought the masking in a little tighter. So the only bits we're really bringing that extra saturation to are the more intense bits of the flames through here. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's time that we introduce some lasers. And I think you're gonna like this. Okay, let's come to the plus icon so we can add a new layer. And again, we've got to think outside the box, guys. Come on down here to the lasers and check this out. I wanted to show you this image here. Absolutely, we could be bringing in something like this to be a laser. But again, I just wanted to encourage you to think outside the box. And that is why I'm gonna bring in this image here and we are gonna create a double laser by utilizing these two vertical lines here of the one in 2019. So I'm gonna open this. It's added to my layers palette. I click on it and there we go. It's brought into the image. Let's push that opacity to 100 so that you can see exactly what's going on. So we are literally gonna borrow these two elements here, maybe even some of the sparkles from the Christmas tree as well to be two lasers coming out from Vader's shoulder. So how are we gonna do that? As you guys know, the screen mode is good for getting rid of all those dark pixels. So there you go. Currently it looks like Darth Vader's celebrating 2019. He needs to get with the program, it's 2020. Too. But I want to show you guys that not only do we have options to resize these layers, we can actually manipulate the geometry of this layer. And to do that, what we do is open up the develop tool and at the very bottom of the develop tool is this option here for transform. And these sliders that usually allow us to correct for geometric abnormalities when you're photographing things like architecture and you get that keystoning effect. Well, these sliders in this instance are going to allow us to have a little bit of fun with these lasers. So if I come back to the layer properties here, that's gonna allow me to rotate these. Now I could be super lazy and try and just line these flat edges up with the side of Vader's cape, but I don't know that that's necessarily the angle I want these on. I kind of want them more cut in across like this. So let's go for that. Make sure that they cover the whole frame there. And I'm gonna jump over to my masking section. And this time, rather than actually add these lasers back in, I think I'm just gonna erase what I don't want. So let's crank the strength to 100. certainly want to make sure that the laser itself is fully visible. Now I'm going to zoom in and just be a little bit more careful coming around the edge of Vader here. I find it's easier to start with a smaller brush, go along the edge and get yourself pretty close with that. Then do a second pass with the brush just slightly bigger, bigger again, until you've moved far enough away from that edge just like how we change the color of these solid panels here, we can also do the same with this layer as well. So if we wanted to make our lasers, I don't know, let's say green, so it's like Jedi laser or something, um, we can come in and select the color option. And again, just come down to the hue shift, move that more in towards the greens, and there you go. You've got some green lasers instead. You can go any color you want, you know, but I'm gonna go for green for this one. Again, we need to give consideration to how this green would be affecting the scene. So we can do what we've done before by introducing another color. We can get ourselves a little bit closer just by selecting a green this time. 
stretch it over the whole frame and then again we just need to come down and find ourselves a blend mode that we're happy with and overlay actually does a really good job for colorizing but we could try something like multiply to see how that looks and in this case that's not too bad at all so we now need to just come in and mask that in where we want it so i think i'm going to paint it in around the lasers themselves so i'm just going to come down with the lower strength click and then just drag up over the laser and then do the same on the bottom one and that's just helping to intensify the color and then if i want to introduce that into other elements of the scene like on vader's helmet i can do that so there you go he looks like he's got a little bit of a glow going on there perhaps on his cheek it might be reflecting it or on the top of his cape down the side you know it's not much it's subtle let's hide the layer and then show it again you may even want to do the same on the stormtroopers as well just to add a little bit to them okay now as i'm doing this it's actually getting a little bit laggy like i've actually clicked and i'm painting and you can see that i'm actually getting a dotted effect from where i'm bringing this masking tool over and that is because i'm asking too much of my processor whenever i'm doing these videos i'm running recording equipment i'm running luminar neo adobe premiere i have a lot going on and so sometimes i just need to give my system a little bit of breathing space again and so to do that all i need to do is that technique that i showed you before which is exporting what we've done so far and then i can carry on editing if i want to as long as we're adhering to a high quality file like i showed you before when we exported our tiff we're going to be okay to carry on our edit on top of what we export so let me do that now i'm going to export this as version 3 and now when I open this up and start editing again Luminar is just going to move so much freer because it's not encumbered by multiple layers and all of those edits that we'd added as well and if I zoom in you're going to see that the quality is exactly as it was before I could absolutely leave this edit here but why not have playtime right let's throw some smoke in here let's do some other stuff and just see where we can take this photo because that is really one of the great things about luminar neo is you can just get as creative as you want with it so why wouldn't there be some smoke floating around let's go with that if we go to the screen mode we're going to lose all of that black and now all we're going to see is a little bit of this puff of smoke here so maybe that's a little bit too intense this was our before this was a hundred and so we can just sort of tweak this exactly as we want it i saw this one as well i don't know if this is going to work for us adding this in it's a little bit random but there might be elements of this that i like so let's bring it over the whole image and let's just play with the blend mode i think i'm going to go down to overlay and just see how that looks soft light oh, okay i quite like to overlay actually let's push it all the way to 100 and just see what it's doing for us we can rotate it and just see if there's any effects we like here take it away go to 100 far too much but little things like just this little wisp over vader's shoulder here if i push that to 100 you can see that there's just this little wisp of smoke there's some smoke going on up there i could mask this in precisely where i want it but i'm just going to introduce a little bit of it like i say i'm having a bit of a play around now just to see what else i can do I feel like the left hand side of the frame is a little bit too bright at the moment and so i want to darken that down so that our eye goes more to this interesting side on the right hand side so i can't just darken down the left while this layer is selected so i need to jump down to the bottom layer so i'm talking to the layer that contains all the stormtroopers and now i can come in grab the develop tool and i can either drop the exposure or i could use the curves just to sort of bring that darkness level down as well doesn't really matter either one or both whatever we can then choose a linear gradient drag it in from that left hand side switch back to adjustment so we can see what it's doing okay it's just a little bit too strong let's ease it off a little bit and i'd also like to paint a little bit of that in at the bottom of vader's cape because i feel like that's just getting a little bit washed out and a little bit too bright let's have a look at our before and our after yeah he's back to his proper darkness there if you're wanting to take advantage of Luminar's more creative tools where you could add a bit of color toning or anything like that, what you'd need to do is, again is to actually export this file as it is so everything gets flattened down. I'm hoping that the developers will add the functionality just to merge down all the layers, but currently they don't. So that workaround again is just to come back to the catalog, right click on the photo, come to export, reopen that up, 
And now when you come into the edit section, we have the option to use any of these creative tools and it will affect the whole photo. So for example, if we go into the mood tool, that gives us the ability to add a LUT, which is a lookup table, which actually comes from the film industry. So we could actually come in and say, hey, we wanna apply some Los Angeles film LUT. And the amount that you apply, never go to 100, far too much. But by pushing that to 100, just like with all the tools, we can see exactly what these lookup tables are doing to our photos. And it's a really nice way just to kind of create a bit of cohesion through the whole photo by tying all of those elements together. So let's go for Los Angeles and we're just going to bring that amount back down to its default of 30. We added the dramatic filter earlier which added a bit of pop to those stormtroopers um, but we could add it again just as a little bit. Maybe even the glow tool may be good just to bring a little bit more oomph to the lights and to the lasers. So at the moment it's on soft focus which isn't what we want but what about if we go to glow? toggle our before and after and just see if there's any areas where we'd like that. So yeah, maybe around the lasers and the lights, 100% is far too much. So let's bring that down somewhere around 50 and we're gonna mask it in only where we want it. So we're gonna paint this effect in. So I'm just gonna go over the laser, over this laser and over the lights and there you go. You saw me add some smoke as a layer, but obviously we could have used Atmosphere AI to actually add a similar effect and that will operate for us in a three dimensional space. So if we wanted to, we could just come in and add some layered fog, crank that amount to 100, bring the depth forward, maybe drop the lightness because it's getting a little bit too bright. Toggle our before and after and it's just creating a little bit of a haze over the stormtroopers in the background. So maybe we want to go with a little bit of that. Perhaps not over Vader though, so I'm going to switch to the Erase tool, push the amount all the way to 100 and just sort of take that off of him. And I think as a very last touch, I feel like we're losing a little bit of contrast, particularly in the bottom third. Things are just getting a little bit washed out. Vader's cape doesn't really feel like it's pushing towards pure black like you would expect. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna jump into the develop section. And this is where curves is our friend because basically we're gonna be able to talk into the shadows and bring those down. We can put a point closer to the middle and bring that up and that's just going to protect those mid-tones. As long as we keep that point close to that 45 degree black line there, we're going to know that those tones are exactly where they were originally before we added the curves. And in the top half, things are getting brighter, so it is adding contrast. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And because I want most of that effect in the bottom half of the frame, the ideal kind of mask for that would be, yep, you guessed it, the linear gradient. So I can click at the bottom, so where I've clicked, that's going to be 100%. And as I bring the mouse up, wherever I let this go, above this line here, that's going to be 0% of the effect. So I'm going to let go there, come back to adjustments. And if we turn the eyeball tool off and on, you can see that we're getting an appropriate level of darkening again in the bottom of the frame. We've still got our haziness. We've still got our smoke. So we're kind of having the best of both worlds. And that, my friends, I'm going to call it. Let's take a look at our before and our after, see where we've come from, see where we've got to. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this edit and I really hope you've learned a lot as well. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to help and answer those and potentially make a new video to cover anything that you'd like me to go more in depth on. Thanks so much guys. There's another video on the screen right now. Click that one and I'll see you over there as well.